What's the crack? This is Dave. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I went from being an Airbnb cleaner, earning 25 quid a pop, to being an Airbnb business owner, doing over four million pounds in bookings per year. And some of it may surprise you, like how COVID was actually the biggest catalyst for our growth ever. Now I'm making this video because I get asked all the time how I got started. And like any good story, it's a little complicated with some twists and turns and bumps along the road, but it's worth sticking around for because I'm sure there are gonna be some lessons in there that are gonna help you with your business. So we started the journey back in 2007. Now I'd just come back from traveling in New Zealand, an amazing country, and I was working in mental health. So I was chasing this dream of becoming a clinical psychologist. And around that time, I started helping my mum and dad clean their Airbnb and meet the guests whenever they would arrive. So they would give me 25 quid for a clean and 25 quid for meeting the guests. And yeah, it was cool and all. I really enjoyed meeting the guests. The cleaning was meh, but it was extra money because working in mental health did not pay the bills. At this point, I had absolutely zero interest in becoming an Airbnb host myself. I was very much along the path of becoming a clinical psychologist. So I had a degree in psychology. I was working in all these different jobs. That was the goal. That was my life's purpose. And I was just doing this Airbnb bit on the side for a few extra pounds. But I could see the money that could be made there. And as I say, I did enjoy meeting the guests. I really enjoyed it. I loved my city. I loved when people were coming for the first time, a bit unsure about what they were going to see. I would give them loads of recommendations. And then whenever I would meet them when they were checking out, because I was going to clean, they would just be gushing with enthusiasm and excitement and so surprised at how amazing Belfast was. So in 2014, I decided to buy my own one. And it was always just going to be a side hustle. But, you know, <laughs> I did it pretty well. I got quite hooked on it. I could see the money that was coming in. So in 2015, I bought my second one. So my first one brought in 30,000 pounds in the first year and has done more than that since then. But the second one was even better and it's brought in 40,000 pounds in that first year and then has actually done even better since then. So like these numbers were mind blowing to me. It was far more than I was earning in my full-time job. But not only that, I was working for myself. I was in charge of what I was doing. I could set the rates. I could meet the guests. I could do all this sort of stuff myself. I was in control as opposed to being in the shitty rat race, which is what I was in, trying to chase that clinical psychology job. And anyone who runs their own business or starts a side hustle realizes that that control is addictive. You do not want to let that go. Once you get a taste of that freedom, you want to just dive straight in. And so emboldened by the earning that I was already doing, and the potential of where I could get to being my own boss, I decided I was going to do this full time. So 2016 was a big year for me. I got a house. I got engaged on the first day we moved into the house. I quit work. We got married that same year. It was go time. And at the start, everything seemed just amazing. It was like perfect. So I had total freedom. I remember vividly sitting in my boxers in the room next door here, playing PlayStation. On a Monday late morning, about 11 o'clock, all my friends were in work and I was just playing and I was just thinking, this is great. But then the voice came in. No, this is not right. You should not be doing this. You should be hustling. You should be working hard. This is too good to be true. And I wrestled with that a little bit, but I could see See, you know, I made 30K from one property. I got another property and I made 80K. <laughs> it's very easy as a naive entrepreneur or side hustler to just think, well, I'll add in more properties, more properties, more properties, and that money's just gonna, you know, compound and multiply. Around that same time, I started reading loads of business books. The first one I read that had such a big impact on me was Entrepreneur Revolution from Daniel Priestley, who we're gonna come back to because he's had a huge impact on my life, my career. That book honestly lit a fire in my belly and it catapulted me forward in terms of desire, drive, hunger to just keep going. And so we did. We started expanding the business. We started taking on more properties. We were managing them for other people and we just grew and grew and grew. By the end of 2016, I had seven properties that I had control of, but it became very apparent that I was giving away all that time that I had in exchange for that money. My priorities had shifted or very quickly aimed at the money at the expense of time. And it was difficult too. So while I had two properties, I was able to work full time. With seven, I was really starting to get burnt out and overworked. Now, yes, I had cleaners cleaning the property and I actually had those from whenever I had two properties, I realized I needed to outsource that. So I had the cleaners at this stage, but everything was coming through me. I was the bottleneck. I was pulling all the levers, spinning all the plates and it was tough going. So I outsourced the cleaning, but the linen came through my house. So all the dirty linen, all the dirty towels, dirty sheets, had to get bagged up at the property and they came back to my house 
and that's where the linen company picked them up from. So I had mountains and mountains of stinking dirty linen that got picked up once a week. And I was working every hour of the day. Now don't get me wrong, I was enjoying it. My wife would be out at work. I was hustling away on the computer, trying to get bookings, trying to maximize rates, all this sort of stuff. I really did enjoy being in control and seeing how that when I made a decision, I could implement it like that. I didn't have to get confirmation or the okay from anyone above me. It was me steering the ship. But at the end of 2017, my first baby arrived and I knew that I just wanted to be present for him, to be there to see all the milestones, not stuck on the computer or running down to a property to deal with some emergency that had happened. I wanted to be there, to be present and to get to show a good example for him about what life should be like. So with that, I made probably what I imagine is the most terrifying decision of any young entrepreneur's career is to hire their first employee. Now at the same time, I was consuming business books like crazy on Audible because I didn't actually have time to sit down and read. I was listening on the headphones while I was out doing bits and pieces. And there was a couple of books that made a real impact on me. So the first one is The E-Myth Revisited, which talks about how if you're starting a business and you need to systemize it to get yourself out of it. And the second was Life Leverage. And I, this was a groundbreaking one for me as well, where it, it talks about how you can double, triple, or infinitely quadruple your hours, your hourly time by leveraging other people and getting people to do jobs that you don't need to do. So I knew I needed to systemize the business. I knew I needed someone to come in and help me with it. But the problem was, I had no idea how to be a manager. And when something's your own little baby that you've grown from nothing, handing over the reins to someone else can be very, very difficult. I found myself micromanaging. I was stressed out, the employee was stressed out, and I ended up causing more problems than I had before. But we kept at it. We kept trying to figure out different ways of doing things. We kept pushing, we kept growing, and we were ticking along. We were getting bigger, and we were definitely making more money. And at the start of 2020, I remember sitting down with our business development manager at the time, looking at the numbers and thinking, we're gonna make a million quid this year. But then, as we all know, 2020 didn't work out as well as any of us thought it was going to. The coronavirus pandemic started in China, spread to Europe, and had reached the UK by the end of January. In March 2020, my entire world just fell apart. It just crumbled around me. This business that I'd worked so hard to build, blood, sweat, and tears over years that we'd got to it in the space of a week, I think we lost hundreds of thousands of pounds that were of bookings, non-refundable bookings that were in our bank that because of decisions made by Airbnb and Booking.com, force majeure, no booking was safe, every booking was cancelled and every booking that we had money in the bank for was refunded. We had to let team members go. It was a horrible time. I had to have personally so many awkward conversations with clients whose properties we were managing them for. Our job is to fill their properties with tourists, but there ain't no tourists in 2020. And we actually ended up losing about half of our portfolio. So out of 40, we lost about 20. And even the 20 that we kept, we were so lucky to keep them. That was me imparting so much optimism of in March, 2020, this will be over by the summer this will be fine. You know, a lot of our clients, they needed money. Their, their properties were leveraged. They needed income to pay their mortgage on. So they just went straight to tenants. But there was quite a lot of the clients that stuck with us, that saw the bigger picture, that knew this was only going to be a temporary thing. I genuinely was optimistic throughout the whole thing, but I was so unsure about what the path ahead was. And for the first time in a long time, I felt like I didn't have that control that I'd grown so accustomed to, that helped me sleep at night because I knew everything stopped with me. In 2020, I was totally not in control of anything that was happening to me or my business. We had a second baby at this stage and you know the pressure I felt from the first one it was double the pressure but like a million times as less ability for me to actually do anything in 2020. It was, it was just horrible all around. I was actually envious of people who were in jobs who got put on furlough. Now, I don't know what the government support was like in other parts of the world, but in the UK, we got bounce back loans that were offered to businesses. So I availed of one of those, as well as any other support that the government was willing to offer us. So it was furlough schemes and things like that. I was checking the government guidelines on a daily basis about whether there was any scope of things moving or any cause for optimism. And I just tried tried to look for ways or for things that I could be positive about. And everyone just kept telling me, just switch off, just relax, you know, the lockdown's in, it's gonna be a couple of months, just back off, lie down, have a rest, and you know, come back at it later. But any entrepreneur knows, they've got that fear that if you switch off, you're in that hustle mode, and if you switch that off, 
there's always that fear in the back of your head, am I gonna be able to turn this back on again? We're like trains, it takes a while for the engine to get going, but once it's going, it's going. And once you stop, it can be hard to get going again. And then one day, I came across this LinkedIn post by, yet again, Daniel Priestley, about how to spend a bounce back loan. And a light bulb went off in my head. This was a way that I could use that money, as well as my time and my energy and my hustle and my optimism to get back some control during this completely out of control time. I was determined that we were gonna use that to come out of COVID in a much stronger position than we went in. So what did we do? Well, we got our new website designed, we rebranded, to be much more slick and professional. I got a business and mindset coach to just help me keep my head in the game and to go, go forward in the right direction. And that was so useful because, you know, friends and family, not any of them were proper entrepreneurs. So they were sort of just, they didn't get the way I felt. I felt quite isolated, quite lonely. But having a business coach was just so good to just be able to offload to. He wanted the best for me. And he helped me just rearrange thoughts, focus on what I should focus on, discard the things that I shouldn't. And it was just great. And that was in 2020 and I'm still using them. I also joined Daniel Priestley's KPI program, which was another game changing thing for me in my career. And off the back of that, I started making video content um, and it was my plan where throughout the, the pandemic, everyone's marketing budgets were turned off because no one knew what was going to happen. We were a small agile business with a few quid from a bounce back loan. And I decided that we were going to start making video content and be much louder in the environment whenever everyone was silent. Searching for best Instagram spots in Belfast. <laughs> It's a small town jukebox rock and roll And I was also drumming up the optimism around Belfast hospitality about the opportunities that were gonna arise once the restrictions were lifted. And it worked because once those restrictions were lifted, we came out like an absolute steam train out of COVID. While so many of my competitors had either shut up shop completely or filled their properties with tenants, we were ready to go. I knew there was gonna be huge amounts of pent up demand of people who just wanted to travel, wanted to visit places, were so sick of staying in their own house, never mind their own town, they would wanna travel Belfast was a great destination because we have outside stuff as well as inside hospitality. There's so much to do in Belfast and Northern Ireland. So I knew it was going to be high on people's lists of destinations to go to. And I actually remember having this real conundrum when we knew the final restrictions of the final lockdown were going to be released. We thought it was going to be the final lockdown. We knew that the, the flood of guests were going to come after us and book all of our places. But we were still operating at a really lean, scaled back team. And I had that decision of we need people in the team to be able to deal with all these guests but we don't have any money come in yet from the guests to be able to pay for these people so again like daniel priestley our savior talks about he talks about the entrepreneur's bet so you're putting a bet on yourself that yes if i employ these people and i have to pay their wages for one month two months without any income coming in well, i'm going to make damn sure that we get that income after a while and that these people give us the capacity to be able to do that so that's what we did and that's what happened we came out of covid growing faster than ever before the demand for property in belfast was higher than ever before and the supply had never been so low and now a few years on we're at over 75 properties doing over four million pounds in bookings per year and welcoming over 18,000 guests every year. The team that I've built is absolutely fantastic, full of rock stars, and they deal with all the day-to-day -day aspects of running this business, which allow me to be basically a stay-at-home dad and make videos like this. Obviously not everything is plain sailing, and like any business, we have struggles with more team members, more properties, and more clients come more complexity, more systems required, and more support needed from the outside. But trust me, nothing you can do to me is gonna be as bad as 2020, 21. Honestly, I always wondered whenever I was younger, how would I fare in a crisis if the shit hit the fan, would I step up or shrink? And there is no bigger shit to ever hit me than COVID. And honestly, I'm proud of the resilience that I showed and the team as well to be able to get through it. So my advice to anyone who's getting started in Airbnb is to think about it like this. Decide exactly why you're doing it. What are your goals? What do you want from this? Is it time or money? If it's time, then maybe stop at one or two properties and enjoy that freedom. Yes, there's a bit of work involved, but it's flexible and you get to sit in your boxers playing PlayStation. If it's money, then just be prepared to give away all your time to get it. Interrupted bedtimes with the kids, interrupted date nights with your partners, difficult conversations. It is tough. In my opinion, I don't think it's worth it unless you're willing to push right through so that you can systemize everything and get yourself out. But honestly, I'm proud of everything that happened along the journey because it's led me and the business to where we are now. I love my city of Belfast. As 
you'll see from all the trinkets and prints all around my office here, we as a company have hosted over 100,000 guests into this city since we started. And I know out of those 100,000, they'll have gone home and told 10 people each that they have to go to Belfast. My business has grown along with the demand for tourism in Belfast, and there is no bigger transformative impact on a city than tourism. I know my kids are gonna grow up in a better city than I experienced growing up in. I also know that I've helped a lot of people along the way with my books and videos and blogs. And honestly, it has been a blast, but none of this would have happened, I don't think, without COVID. The scale at which we grew at because of COVID, I don't know if we would ever have got to this stage in the next 10 years. So that's my story. I didn't talk about it to brag or to show off about 4 million, but I talked about the journey, the struggle that you have to go through because no matter where you get to, people always say, oh, it's easy for you or, you know, no one knows the hard work that you have to put in to get to where something is finally delivering with what you wanted and reaching your goals. I hope you've enjoyed it. And a common theme that's ran throughout this video is the ability to be able to spend time with your family and your kids. And that's one of my highest values is to have complete freedom to just pick the kids up from school, play with them, do their homeworks, make their dinner, put them to bed. Like this is what life is about. And if you wanna know how that can work for you, watch this video on why Airbnb is the best side hustle or business to get maximum freedom with your kids. Thanks for watching.